One of the units I've been pretty high on since a couple months after Engage came out was Citrine. In my first run of the game, I started using her because I liked her outfit and her mismatched earrings, but what I really fell in love with is her massive magic stat. She comes with a tremendous base of 15 magic and has among the highest magic growths, sitting pretty at a 40% growth rate. However, Citrine is also well known for her pretty sad speed, which can make it difficult for her to double, to the point that a lot of people look to Dire Thunder as the only way to solve her doubling issues. I mean, just listen to this YouTuber talking about Citrine like a month after the game came out. Our next unit is Citrine, and how good she is depends heavily on whether you're rigging Bond Rings to get her Dire Thunder or not. Man, that guy was a real dingus, huh? Well, there's actually a few different ways to build Citrine, and there are some ways to resolve or work around her speed issues that don't involve Dire Thunder. So let's talk about what this unit can do, what her best class options are, where they each excel, and how she can fit into your team and compare to other units. But first, a big thank you to my patrons, Helix, Aikipu, Lucy Sev, Van West, Acrobatic Jazz, A Family of Trees, Romeo, Tim Strait, Aaron Geddon, Emma, and Zakar. I really appreciate your support. If you want to get early access to videos, shoutouts in videos, and have access to polls that influence the content and stream schedule, you'll find a link in the video description. Alright, so before we get into specific builds, let's talk about the circumstance of Citrine joining your army, and why it makes her a really nice candidate for early promotion. Citrine joins in Chapter 7 along with Alchrist and Lapis. She joins at level 10, ready to promote, with solid bases besides her speed, which unfortunately can make it a little difficult for her to make a great first impression. She joins with 10 speed, which is only enough to double the armors on the map, and since she joins at the beginning of the map instead of before the map starts, we don't have a chance to promote her, put a ring on her, or feed her a meal. So she's mostly just going to provide chip damage on this map. After her join map is where things start to really open up for Citrine. She can promote immediately and comes with two options, both of which are pretty attractive. We'll get into those options in a little bit, but first I want to talk about how strong of a case Citrine makes to get one of your early Master Seals. The early Master Seal situation looks like this. By Chapter 11, we have four Master Seals to hand out. We can safely assume one of those goes to Alir. We have to deploy Alir, and having them promoted for Chapter 11 is pretty nice. So three left to go to whoever we want. In the very early game, we have two excellent resources for giving a unit a bunch of EXP. Marth provides a lot of EXP with Mercurius, and Micaiah provides a lot through both Great Sacrifice and her ability to use a staff on up to five targets at once. Usually, I like to give Alir one of those, and the other to an early game unit I want to promote, like Chloe. So then we have two seals left, and there's a couple ways we could spend them. We could grind up a third early game unit, like Saline, who probably saw a lot of combat in the early game. Alternatively, we get a handful of units that come at level 10 and ready to go. Citrine is one of those. What's great about these units is that they are relatively free. The really early game units need Marth, Makaya, or a bunch of kills to be ready to promote by the time you get Citrine, and the more of these ready-to-go units you use, like Citrine and Amber, the more you can focus those limited resources on the really early game units you like. Basically, if you spend two Master Seals on units like Amber and Citrine, then you only have to get two units to promotion, which coincidentally is the number of emblems we have that give a bunch of EXP. So it's kind of nice if your early game units don't have to share those, or if you don't have to feed a bunch of kills to a third unit to get them up to promotion level. But what makes Citrine so exciting is that not only is she ready to promote for free, her stats are also comparable or better than the magic options that joined before her. At level 10 promoted, she has a 4 magic lead on Clan and Saline, but without the extra work to level her up. Her only real issue is her speed, but there's ways to fix that that we can get into later. Citrine comparing well to other early game options is great because she doesn't need any resources, you can just promote her and you have a good unit. Her big offensive stats also give her some specific niches that are easier for her to fill than other units that you could use around her join time. For example, her high magic makes it much more realistic for Citrine to one round Morian in Chapter 10 compared to Saline or Clan. So when Citrine shows up, there's good reason to consider using her. So Citrine makes a good case to come out of the early game with a promotion because she comes with good bases and ready to promote. Since she comes in the early game, she also gets access to early game skills before the rings go away in Chapter 11. Since we've got the well to easily provide some SP now, she can very easily get Cantor, plus another skill if you want. Sword power if you're feeling super spicy, magic plus two, whatever. 
Cantor is the big one, though. I don't think the second skill is particularly important for her. All right, so hopefully that was convincing on why you might want to promote Citrine. Let's talk about her two promotion options. We're going to start by talking about Mage Knight. If you want Citrine to start doubling and use her as a primary magical combat unit, Mage Knight is a very good route for her. It immediately gives her plus three speed, which combined with a hero's ring and a meal will get her doubling over half the enemies in the next couple maps after her join, and with her high base magic she'll also one round the low res enemies easily, and even some bulkier enemies if you're willing to throw her a forge or an engrave. Or just have her attack next to a leer to benefit from their personal skill. Citrine's big magic stat is a difference maker here. She can hit more one round kill thresholds than other magic candidates with less forging because she has three to four more magic than them. Or if you really want to go nuts with the forging, she can hit some pretty tricky one rounds on higher res enemies like some early game Pegasus Knights. This isn't super important though. She also gets sword access with Mage Knight, but with a strength of six, you're not going to be getting too much out of that until you either get your first Leaven Sword in chapter 12 or forge one for her early. I don't think you really need to do that, though. Citrine can one round lots of enemies with just a forged or engraved fire tome until that Leaven Sword shows up in Chapter 12. Chapter 12 and the handful of chapters after it are really nice for Citrine because speed plus 3 becomes available and doubling thresholds aren't that hard to hit. Using a meal and the Ana Ring, Citrine can double most of the enemies through the mid-game and can hit one round thresholds on a lot of enemies as well. Plus, at some point she'll hit level 5 and unlock Chaos Style, which is going to be another 3 speed whenever she attacks a physical enemy, which is often because those tend to be the ones with low res. A common sentiment is that Citrine struggles to double, but this isn't really true in the mid-game. I promise this is the only time I'm going to get into a bunch of math, so strap in. At Chapter 12, we can easily give Citrine plus 7 speed without using a terribly competitive resource, a plus 2 speed Hero's Ring, a meal, and a plus 3 speed Inherit gets you there. Once she hits Mage Knight level 5, she can get 3 more from Chaos Style, and her promoted base speed is 13, and at level 5 it's 14. So at base, we can easily get her up to 20 speed, and at level 5, once she's got Chaos Style, we can get up to 24 speed against physical enemies, who are the ones Citrine generally wants to attack anyway. At 20 speed, she can double half the enemies in Chapter 12, and about two-thirds in Chapters 13 to 15. Once she hits level 5, she can reach 24 speed, and then she can double over three-quarters of physical enemies on these maps. And what's more, she tends to one round. The only caveat here is that if you want her on Leaven Sword duty, she does lose speed to it. So I like to keep an Elfire in her back pocket for quick, but usually squishier enemies. However, Citrine cannot outrun her speed issues forever. As we get later into the game, to keep doubling that two-thirds of enemies, Citrine will eventually want some more competitive resources like a Speed Ring or a Speed Wing. Otherwise, she'll be doubling more like half or a little under half of the enemies. If you want to check my math on that, I'll link my Offensive Breakpoint spreadsheet in the video description. Depending on what enemies I want Citrine to fight, in Mage Knight I like to give her either whatever Speed Ring is available, or the Celica Ring. Celica provides even more magic to Citrine, plus access to Warp Ragnarok, which lets her join the party anytime you do a warp skip. You can totally do something like warp a bunch of allies to fight a boss, and then have Citrine warp Ragnarok in to take a chunk out of the boss's health bar. You also get access to Seraphim, which is effective against most of the enemies in the late game, so that's awesome too. The point is, Citrine in Mage Knight has dominant magic combat in the mid game, and it's valuable because enemy resistance is low. She eventually wants a little speed help, but not until towards the end of the game when multiple speed rings and speed wings are available. But say you don't want to make Citrine into a primary combat unit, or you're using other units that want those speed resources. Fortunately, Citrine has a different promotion option that takes her in a different direction and requires much less investment. And that other promotion is Sage. This promotion doesn't take as much effort to make work. Citrine won't double as much since Sage Promotion gives less speed and doesn't provide Chaos Style, but what it does provide is B-Rank Staves. So Citrine can still provide solid chip with her high magic in this class. The role Citrine fills as a Sage isn't as glamorous as the Mage Knight combat role, but it's still really good. B-Rank Staves are awesome. That's Obstruct, Freeze, both the Warps, Rescue, Fracture, all your basic heals. Basically all of the important Staves except for Entrap, and Staves are really good in this game. So Citrine and Sage will pretty much always have something to do. There's always something to Thoron, Chip, or a spot to obstruct, or an enemy to freeze. I really like hooking Citrine up with Corrin for this build for a couple reasons. Mystic typing means that Citrine gets the Fire Dragon Vein, which is by far my favorite. 
It's great for blocking off enemies while doing a little damage to them, and if Citrine is going to be chipping an enemy, she might as well apply Draconic Hex and make it easier for your next attacker to take the enemy out. This just adds another tool to Citrine's toolbox. Chipping, staffing, and dragon veining, and she's good at all of it. A cool thing about this option is that you can always swap to it later. If you want to use Citrine's excellent combat in the mid game but don't want to invest in her further in the late game, you can always second seal her over to Sage and have her start staffing. Because this is a very plug and play build. Citrine can do it at full effectiveness pretty much the moment she's in Sage and she doesn't demand any particular resources. So those are Citrine's main two builds, but there's a couple other ones I want to touch on too. First, perhaps the Citrine build that you hear the most about is Dire Thunder. Dire Thunder is a skill from Olwyn's Bond Ring that makes you attack twice with a Thunder Tome each time you initiate combat with it. This build is really popular because it takes advantage of Citrine's strength of having a massive magic stat and bypasses her weakness of unimpressive speed. So you could do something like Forge a Thunder Tome up to plus 5 and slap an Icon Grave on it, and Citrine will be sitting on 0 speed. But she'll still double and apply her big magic stat twice per attack compared to if she weren't doubling. I'm not that huge on this build anymore, and there's a few reasons for that. First, it's on a Bond Ring, so you need to either get lucky on the Bond Ring gacha or rig it. I'm going to assume that we rig it for the purposes of this video. The second issue is that Dire Thunder only works when you initiate the attack, so the best we're going to get out of this build generally is Citrine killing one enemy on player phase. In contrast, something like Mage Knight Citrine can kill enemies on enemy phase too. You might think that Citrine's bulk would be a problem for enemy phasing, but Engage gives us tools to get around that. You can have a unit protect Citrine with a bonded shield and let her cook on enemy phase. Dire Thunder Citrine doesn't really have this option. The third issue is that this build just doesn't one round as much as you would like it to the further you get in the game. Even if you get that Thunder Tome to plus 5, it's still just 10 might. Sage Citrine has 17 magic when instant promoted, so in the early and mid game she can one round quite a bit with a meal. But later in the game, as enemies get bulkier, Dire Thunder is difficult to scale since you can't upgrade to a bigger tome. Here's a comparison between Mage Knight with a plus 311 sword and Sage with Dire Thunder in Chapter 17. I'm assuming the Mage Knight has speed plus 3 inherited, a speed and a magic meal or tonic, and the speed hero's ring, while I'm assuming the Sage has a max forged thunder and a magic meal or tonic. I would like to assume the Sage has more things that pump their magic, but there's not as many options available for that as there are for speed. The numbers here represent how much HP an enemy has left after being attacked by Citrine, and the colors represent whether it's a one round or not. Green is a one round, red is not a one round, and yellow is close enough to a one round that a rally or standing next to a leer gets you to a one round. So here, Mage Knight Citrine is one rounding 17 more enemies compared to Dire Thunder Citrine. This gets even more exaggerated in the later game. Here's the same spreadsheet, but for Chapter 23. The assumptions for Dire Thunder Citrine are largely the same. We don't have the option to give her a better ring or forge her tome. The only thing we could really do is inherit Magic Plus on her from Celica. Though I did add an Icon Grave here to maximize the Thunder's Might. Mage Knight Citrine has a lot more options for increasing her power here though, so I'm assuming a Forged Volga Nun, a Speed Ring, and the same meals as before. Obviously, this is a lot more investment than Dire Thunder Citrine, but that's because Mage Knight Citrine provides us more avenues for investment. It doesn't lock us down to a specific Low Might weapon, and it doesn't lock us down to a specific Bond Ring. So here, Dire Thunder Citrine isn't one-rounding anything, while Mage Knight Citrine one-rounds or Fringe one-rounds 31 enemies. So basically, Dire Thunder's damage output is very solid in the early game, and it can be a nice way to supplement Citrine's staves, but as the game goes on, if you're doing Sage Citrine, you'll eventually want to move on to other tomes like a Forged Thoron, which provides similar or better chip, but also allows Citrine to use an emblem like Celica or Corrin to add more power and utility. The last build I want to talk about is a more situational one, and that is Sniper Citrine. I realize that might sound sort of odd, but hear me out here. Snipers are mainly good and engaged for two things. Their covert bonus with Byleth, which allows them to rally speed, and their ability to Astra Storm from 20 squares away with the Lin Ring. Citrine does the former just as well as anyone else, and she's among the best at the latter. The main job of the sniper role here is to utilize Citrine's high magic and the high might of the Radiant Bow to one-shot key enemies, bait bosses into moving early, or even take an entire health bar off of a boss from 20 range. This is great anytime you want to finish a map quickly, or whenever you do a warp to a boss and realize you don't quite have enough damage to kill them. 
It's worth noting though that the main thing you get out of Citrine in Sniper is just her high magic, which is mainly a difference maker for situations where high Astro Storm damage is really important. If you're just trying to pull a boss early and aren't worried about taking a health bar off of them, any Sniper can do it. Which is why some of the footage here is actually of Sniper Marin pulling bosses, because that's who I have footage of and literally anyone can do that part of the job. Still, if you want to rip a health bar off of a boss from 20 spaces away, Citrine is one of the best candidates for the job. If you do want to try this build, a few things are worth noting. One, you really need to squeeze as much damage out of the build as possible because Astro Storm cuts the damage of each hit to 30%. So if you want to kill a boss or a difficult enemy, you'll want to forge up a Radiant Bow, throw an Engrave on it, maybe use a Byleth Rally for magic, and finally, you'll want to fire the bow while standing next to a Leer for the damage boost. A good skill for this build that can pump that damage even a little more is Momentum, because it basically just adds some free extra damage to your Astro Storm. This build is a little more situational than the others, it's not as good at general combat, it's mainly good for if you want to play a map kind of fast. If you're planning on routing a map anyway, pulling the boss early or taking a bar off them from 20 spaces isn't that big of a deal. Being able to pull a boss early can still make a map a lot easier, but that's not unique to Citrine. Still, this build is really funny and could have some uses if you want to finish a map fast or skip a boss. So those are a few ways that I like to build Citrine. Among them, my favorite is Mage Knight Citrine. She's really strong in Mage Knight, especially in the mid game, and watching her one round tons of enemies is hilarious. That said, this is a fairly high investment build, particularly come late game, where she definitely needs every drop of speed she can get. Additionally, in Mage Knight, Citrine's role and needs overlap a fair amount with Ivy, who sort of does it better since she can fly and use a staff. Still, if you want two magical combat carries, or if you're not using Ivy for that job, Citrine does a great job in the role. Sage Citrine is a bit more plug and play, pretty much every team can benefit from another staffer that can provide good chip and hold a powerful emblem ring, and she doesn't need as much investment to perform well in this role. She can also even offer good early game combat if you feel like spending some time in rigging an Olwyn ring. Or if you want to cheese some maps and take out some bosses quickly, you can even try the sniper build. Citrine's giant magic stat and that she comes ready for promotion makes her a great fit for any of these roles and I think can make her fit into almost any engaged team. It also makes her one of my favorite units to use and I hope you'll give her a try. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you liked it, consider hitting the like or subscribe button so that you don't miss an upload and if you want to chat about Fire Emblem, consider checking out the Discord in the video description or stopping by one of the live streams. Either way, thanks for hanging out and have yourself a lovely week.